Schoology has two different types of materials in which the system will grade it for the teacher. The first of which I'm going to go over is assessments. Now, even though it's called assessments, there's so many different ideas that you can use it for. Let me go through some of the ins and outs of assessments. This is a pre-made assessment that I usually use during training. You have a setup feature where you've got all these different questions um, that you answer. You turn them on or off. Um, one of them is flagging questions, eliminating answer choices. Can the student use a calculator, ruler, or protractor? And then you've also got a text-to-speech toolbar. Then we've got the different question types, and they've just recently added an audio, video, and file upload. I think we're at about 17 different question types. When you go to the grading section, you can sort it by question or by student. When you do it by question, it's going to show which questions need grading, and those are going to be your open-ended. Live progress is going to tell you whether the student has started the test or not, what item they are currently on, how many questions they've answered, how much time they have spent on it, and how many items they have flagged. The reporting, if you have one through four students that have completed it, you're going to get a dot plot. Once you hit student number five, you get this box and whisker, and it also sorts them. Um, you can change the sort from high to low, low to high. So to show you some of the question types, this is a multiple choice question type, but I want to show you where you can have it start reading. For years, Burmese pythons, which are not native to Florida, have been threatening to overrun Everglades National Park. Exotic pet owners. You can also use the block text for longer text. And then I can also, this is where the student can highlight it. So you'll notice there's tools over here. This is which allows them to go back and review the questions and see which ones they've completed or not completed. Accessibility lets them choose a different font and background color. They can change the font size and it even shows them how they can zoom in and out. They can flag questions for review. If it's a multiple choice question type, they can eliminate choices. And then this also, any of the tools like the calculator, the ruler, the protractor, any of those that were added at the test level will be found here. Now I'm not going to go through all the different question types, but I just want to show you some of the more interactive ones. This is one that's a fill in the blank, but it's a drag in the drop, fill in the blank. This is a um, label image where I can put any image in there and then the students will drag and drop answers into the image. This is highlight hotspot where I insert an image and then I indicate what on that image I want students to be able to click on to show what their answer is. And this is one where the students write on it. And what's really neat about this is that it does a screen capture of everything that the student writes. And so as the teacher, I can see from start to finish exactly what their thought process was. They can change the color on this. This is one where the teacher can decide whether they're going to have the students select sentences, words, or paragraphs, but the students will just click on, in this case, sentences to show what their answer is. This is a chart question. There's four different types of charts. There's a line graph, bar graph, dot plot, line plot, and histogram. This is a number line, so students will drag and drop. You can also use it as a timeline, as I've done here. This is one where I did ordered pairs. 
where they can drag and drop the ordered pairs up into to the coordinate plane. This is another label image where I have latitude and longitude, drag and drop. And this last example is one in which I did a combination where I created a number line question type and then I took a screenshot of the number line and then I went back and created a label image question. I inserted the number line and then I inserted um, the labels over the number line so we could do a drag and drop. And if I go back to the grading, this is the highlight image question. And we can see exactly what the students have written. It's going to do that screenshot. One thing you really want to do with the assessments and how it becomes really useful is that you can add standards. So if we see this, we can see that I've attached, I'm in Indiana, so I've attached Indiana standards. But it's going to show me those standards. And this is going to help with tracking mastery of standards. And we'll talk about that in the next section. But you can do that with assessments and with test quiz. So in assessments, if I click on this question to edit it, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to click on learning objectives. So there's custom learning objectives. We have some schools that are standard based and they have their own objectives. And so we've added those to the custom learning objectives. If you're a common core state, you can click on the common core. I'm going to go to the state standards and because we're Indiana, it's been moved to the top. We click on academic standards. We choose our subject area, our grade level, and we basically drill down until we find the standard that this particular question um, covers. Then we click confirm and we can see that it's added to the question. We can hover over it and it will tell us what that is. Now I mentioned earlier that you can use assessments for many different options. A couple examples I have of self-assessments. I created a rubric and I took a screenshot of it. You can create rubrics in your, in your resource section. And then I did a highlight hotspot so I just drew over each of these boxes so that my students could rate themselves. And then another example of self-assessments as I did it with the chart question. So they just moved the bars to show how they felt they did. Homework. Some examples of homework. I took a worksheet that I made in PowerPoint and I exported it out as a PNG file and I uploaded it as a label image question. And then I just added all these different number choices and I made it so that the numbers could be used over and over again. And so the students are just gonna drag and drop. Now as a math teacher, I would definitely want to see their work. So I'd still collect that as a separate sheet, but the time consuming part of actually grading the homework is gonna be done for me by Schoology. You can do station work inside assessments. So here are some examples of primary. Now I'll be the first to tell you that I've not taught anything younger than fifth grade. So I was looking at the standard and I made some examples. I honestly do not know if they are grade appropriate or not, but just to give you, you know, another example, this is another one where I, I put an image in there. I, I created this in PowerPoint and I brought some clip art in and then I insert it into assessments, into the label image, and then they're just going to match beginning letter sounds and drag and drop up. This one is a matching. I could have put pictures into both, but for rhyming words, this is one where they're just going to click on everything that's red. And this is one that has to do with time, dragging the time up. 
Now the intermediate ones, um, I did a lot with task cards. I used to use task cards a lot when I was teaching. And so here I just took a, a screenshot of a task card and they're just going to type in their answer. This particular task card, they're just going to drag and drop it up. This, I put the protractor at the question level. And so I click on the protractor and I bring out and make it so that it fits the angle and then I just type in the answer. And this is one with the ruler. So now in our state for third grade, our students have to choose between an inch ruler and a centimeter ruler. So the only way that I could get it so that the students could choose between the two was to add one at the question level and then add another one at the test level so that they could choose which ruler was the most appropriate one for this particular question. So those are just some examples um, that you can use. So it doesn't necessarily have to be for assessments. So the other material in which the system grades it for you is a test quiz. So again, we've got the, so again, we can attach that standard, which allows us to track mastery. Now with test quiz, we only have six question types. I do want to let you know that Schoology will be getting rid of test quiz. It has been around since we adopted Schoology four years ago, and I'm sure it was around long before that, but they are converting everything to the assessments. But one of the things that I really enjoy about test quiz that they don't have an assessment yet is that you can add from question banks. So our math department in, in our I-STEP grades in three through six has created question banks. And so it's really easy for a teacher to go in and pull in questions from those question banks. And again, with the test quiz, we do the question and at the end right here is how we can add our learning objective. So again, we've got custom. We go through each of those. We would click on the state and we would eventually get to the standard that we want and we would attach it just like we did the other one. It turned to green color and click add learning objective and it is attached itself there. As I stated earlier in the next section of my presentation, we will talk about how adding these standards will give you feedback on how your students are progressing.